hey everybody, I hope you can hear me. Uh, I had a problem with my headset. I gotta get me a new one, it looks like, and mine won't work anymore. But anyway, uh, just thought I'd touch bases. There's a little bit more highway time, or road time, whatever you wanna call it. I'm actually in the upstate New York area. I just now left Vermont. I was up in the Vermont a little bit. I had to do a kind of a weird run, and I'll probably explain that in one of my videos here shortly, but uh, we're traveling back, uh, gonna head back to Piston, uh, Pennsylvania. In two miles, continue straight on to US 11. Uh, right now, we just got a, I got a major problem. My APU went completely down uh, all the way. So I'm uh, hauling an empty trailer back from uh, my last uh, drop. And uh, looks like I'm gonna have to see what we can come up with. Uh, Right now it looks pretty bleak. Apparently, uh, when they—I don't know if it was happened during the service when they did the service on it a week and a half ago, or what—but uh, it looked like uh, instead of antifreeze, there's oil in the radiator. So it might we be a blown motor? Anyway, and of course, uh, piston's not uh, fully capable of carrying that system. So it's a good possibility that Curtis might get rerouted back to. Springfield, but anyway, that's going to be a different story later, but anyway, yeah, I come up through here, I'm right up next to the Canadian border, it was funny, I wished I'd have started this video, because you would have been able to see the checkpoint to going into Canada, but uh, didn't get it started quick enough, but uh, this is the rural area, we're in the northern part of New York right now, getting ready to head over to 87 to head south along the well, be Massachusetts and Connecticut border, bordering uh, New York, and then I'm going to head uh, probably over and get on 84 over to Pennsylvania. Uh, looking at about 390 miles, probably around seven and a half, eight hour drive. So it'll take up most of my clock today to get there. I'm thinking about four to five. They're setting me a scheduled time to be in Piston about eight, uh, six o'clock tonight. But anyway, I just wanted to touch bases with you guys, let you see a little of this country. I am so impressed. Vermont is beautiful. I mean, I don't much care for the hills like I don't in PA, but I'm telling you what, the country itself, it really is God's country, man. You wouldn't know it being this is uh, what it is, but uh, it is what it is, so we're going to enjoy it, okay, that's for sure. And uh, we're going to be cruising here a little Continue bit. Straight I'll on let you guys to check this out. I'll let you check it out. This is kind of a rural area right now, but we're Get on the uh, highways, we'll be able to really check it out. So, proceed west on US 11 in a half mile. <coughs> Look for second wind up roundabout towards US 11. Then, after 200 feet, turn right to US 11. Down here and hit a little runabout, looks like that'll be fun. So, I'm gonna take it like it is and see what happens. Second wind up roundabout, then turn right. Damn. This old boy taking his sweet time, boy, I'll tell you. Turn right to US 11, then look for second wind up roundabout. Second wind up roundabout towards I-87, then take exit straight ahead for I-87 South. Playing the runabouts today. Wow, this is Look a trip. For second wind up roundabout. <laughs> well, we're having fun today. Feet, take exit straight ahead for I-87 South. Take exit straight ahead for I-87 South. Wow. In 900 feet, they don't make continue the truck, to I-87. But anyway, we're getting cruising here. We're again, we're still in. We're in New York. We just got into New York from Lamont. Uh, 
I don't know how, uh, I want to say the name of it. It's a uh, St. Aim, uh, uh, Albus or something like that. St. Albus or something is the name of the town that I was originally at. Anyway, I'm trying to continue my information without being rudely interrupted. Uh, been pretty interesting for now. I mean, it's just the way it is. So, we're just going to get on down here and get cruising here, hopefully, in a minute.
said, well, let's try to see if we can get you a load directed back towards Pistons so you can take the truck back. I said, okay. Well, there was no loads. Hard to believe because we're, in, we're right next to New Hampshire. We're in New Hampshire. We got Vermont. We got Maine. We think there'd be a decent load coming out of those areas to head back south. Apparently not. So, he decides to send me a deal to become a shovel worker. What that means basically is you'll take the empty trailer that you picked up to deliver to a location to replace a trailer that has to be repaired or whatever. So, anyway, this is what happens. I get the trailer. I take the trailer. Well, this trailer's trashed as every freaking trailer is after it's been offloaded or whatever. And so I know I've got to get a horse out. So I start heading up, and he sends me up to St. Albans, Vermont, to deliver this trailer to a Ben & Jerry's. Okay, cool, whatever. Kind of out of the way, 206 miles empty, and then he wanted me to pick up another trailer that was in that general area about eight miles away, and, and pick it up and take it back to Pistons because it was due for a repair. Don't know what it was at that time. So I said, no problem, fine. So anyway, I knew I only had about three and a half hours left on my clock, so I was going to get as close as I could get, and then I would go ahead and, and take my 10-hour break and, and go in again in, in the next morning to get this all taken care of, get the horse out, take this trailer to Ben & Jerry's, drop it, bobtail back over eight and a half miles, pick up the trailer, and then take it back to this. Okay, everything was going good. Then all of a sudden, I get a pre-plan for a pickup in Fairfax, Vermont to deliver to Richmond, Virginia. It paid, I mean, total miles was about 800 and some miles. It paid a little over a grand, something like that. But I had to contact the uh, dispatcher. I said, no, I, I can't do it because I'm packed on another different deal for Trey that there's no way I can pick it up. It was uh, a 1300 hour appointment or one o'clock appointment. I wouldn't get there in time. Plus, it would have been okay, it would have been a slight detour to go a little bit, not much, to go take it with the piston. It gave me three days to do it in. So, anyway, I said, no, let me get this taken care of, because I don't know how long it's going to take. I'm getting a war shot. i got to take it over Bobtail, go back over. And it just so happened, the place that I was getting the war shot, the trailer I was supposed to take back to piston, is sitting right there. So when I pulled up, I called the guy, told him I need a war shot, and I said, oh, by the way, I see you had that trailer from Prime out there. Uh, once I get this war shot, I'm taking it over to Ben and Jerry's, and I'll come back and get that off your hands. He said, no, you won't. And I said, well, yes, I will, because I'm directed to do that by my fleet manager from Prime. He said, no, because, see, we got approved by Prime to repair it, and then we're going to take it back over to Ben and Jerry's, drop it off once we're done with it. I said, well, when's that was at? Late this afternoon. I said, God, here we go. So I put a call in. Of course, the fleet managers are switching around from night to day. So I, I'm delayed. I get my Porsche out. Great people. Great, great company. I pull over to the side and I wait and I contact my fleet manager telling him everything that's going on. And he goes, wow. He said, nobody's communicating. I said, basically, that's true. I mean, the guy, I mean, you know, I'm not trying to throw him under the bus. But Brandon, you know, I called Road Assistant Springfield talking about it. They didn't have a clue what I was talking about. Didn't know what the trailer was even needed up there. So that tells you that the different areas, you know, Piston and Springfield are not communicating together. Go figure. So he has no clue about it. So anyway, I went ahead and called Piston back and explained to him what was going on. And I said, hey, you know by chance if there's any other repair being done to this trailer number and that they were going to repair what they thought would need, you know, what needed to be repaired and they were going to take it back to uh, Ben & Jerry. No, they didn't have no well more idea. I said, okay, I'm done. I'm done trying to help everybody out. I've done everything I can do on my end. I went above and beyond the call of duty. So I called my fleet manager. I said, you tell me what you want me to do. I got a, I got a clean truck. I got a clean empty trailer that I'm not, I guess apparently it's not going to Ben & Jerry now because it's supposed to replace that one. What do you want me to do? So I sit there. And I sit there for about an hour. 
finally we got together on it. He said, well, here's what we can do. He said, you go ahead and take that loan. We'll go with the plan we got. He said, go ahead and take that empty trailer and bring it back to this trailer so that you can get you meet your appointment for your truck. And we'll go from there. I said, fine. So I got done with him, so I went around and I called Piston to give him a possible ETA of my arrival. Well, they already knew that I explained to them earlier that morning that I thought there was oil in the radiator. I mean, dude, when you take it out, it looks like molasses. It's not green like a radiator fluid is. It looks like molasses. It looks straight up like oil to me. There was no smell, so it was probably diluted. But I went ahead and explained to him what I see, and the guy down below said, uh-oh, that could be a major deal. So anyway, I said, okay, fine. I figured it'd be a blown engine or a blown head gasket or something on the motor. But anyway, I call him back and this other guy answers. And I tell him, he already knew everything about what was said. And he said, I'm going to tell you right now, the odds are we don't have those kind of parts here in Piston. We're going to go evaluate it, check it out, see what it is, and then we'll determine that thing. But he said, I bet you 90% that you're going to have to be routed back to Springfield to get a new unit to put on your truck. I said, you've got to freaking be kidding me. I'm freaking believe. So that basically just wipes out me getting anything accomplished. Probably not even a load. If I'm lucky, hopefully I can get a repower out of Piston if I have to be redirected to Springfield and take the load to Springfield or drop it near Springfield and then bobtail or deadhead back to Springfield so I can get this unit repaired. Which means I'll lose revenue, i lose all my money, time, and everything else. You know, my biggest question, and I'm gonna ask everybody about this, and I said, this is what blows my freaking mind. When you get a 2020, I don't care whether it's a Peterbilt, a Freightliner, or an International, there should be a, night, a 2020 Thermal King APU unit on that truck. Period. Period. But everybody wants to save money or everybody wants to do something. Okay, you need to do a remanufactured unit before you put it on the brand new truck. That's my opinion. And I'm sticking to it. And I'll probably get some repercussion, but I really don't give a rat's you know what. So, I don't understand why you get a brand new truck with less than a thousand miles on it and you've got an APU that's got 6,000 hours on it, which could be anywhere from two to three years old. And it looks like a piece of good crap on the inside. Yeah, I'll blame myself for a portion of that when I did my inspection on the truck. I should have really concentrated on that APU because that APU is old. And I don't think it's fair to me to have a freaking used piece of equipment on a brand new truck that I'm have to pay for, plus have to pay 70 damn dollars a month, whether it's new or used, on an APU unit that, don't, that only lasts less than a freaking month, had a brand new radiator put back on it because it was leaking, that's the second radiator that was on that unit, after I was told at the yard a week and a half ago, plus being serviced, oil changed, oil, all that stuff. And they didn't catch any leaks or cracks or anything or didn't do a complete inspection on it. I throw that back up on the road and maintenance and strengthen. So you can see where I'm going to end up losing probably quite a bit of revenue because i got to get this ABU fixed. Now, yes, you say, well, you can do without it. Yeah, okay, whatever. I don't care. I don't care. I need an APU because I have stuff. I cook on this truck. I don't go out and eat because I can't afford to go out and eat. So I use the APU for the reason of being able to eat on my truck. And I use a, I use a electric skillet and I use my air fryer for food. And now by God, I'm not gonna sit here and have to pay 70 freaking dollars a week for an APU that doesn't work. So that's my rant about that. So that's what's happened. Right now, I am now Bob Ted. Well, not Bob. I've got an empty, and I'm headed back to Piston to 
see what they're going to eventually tell me. I'm going to end up going back to Springfield. Because they don't keep parts or they don't keep units and pistons, which is unbelievable because they're, they're, you know, they're prime. They should be carrying this equipment. You know, so there's a lot of things that I'm not very pleased about right now. I mean, things are looking good. We got a good payout. My fleet manager did outstanding for me this past this past settlement. I did real good. I'm happy. My wife's shocked, and we're good to go. But I got a feeling I'm going to pay for it on this settlement coming up. It's going to kill me because I'm not going to get very many good loads. I don't think a big enough load to carry costs. So I told her she needed to pack some of that money back. But I guarantee we're going to probably need it next week. So, anyway, that's what's going on. But my my, my my fleet manager is doing everything he can for me. I, I, I appreciate that. You know, I'm getting paid to do what I'm doing right now. It's not probably fancy, but it's money. And it's going towards, you know, next week's settlement. So. But I've got a feeling I'm going to be down for a few days. I mean, hopefully, if they assess this problem, say it's got to go to Springfield, then hopefully my fleet manager give me a load out, either a retired load or a load coast by, and I'll take it towards that direction. Where is that wind? The door's not open. But anyway, guys, that's my rant for the day. I'm, I'm not mad. I'm, I mean, I'm not upset. I'm not threatening to quit or walk away. I'm not giving up. I mean, it's just, I know it's part of this, it's part of my life right now to deal with the unexpected and I'll deal with it. But it just ups it, there's several things within our company system that upsets me. I'm not trying to dog the company out. It's a good company. It's a great company for training wise for us to get our GDL. We've got the best training corps in there in the company in the country. But it just it, it seems like there's a lot of lack of communication between the different departments. I'm not talking on the driver's side, I'm talking on the internal side. <coughs> that nobody knows nothing. And I mean, it's taking them on the driver, besides doing his job, doing their job as well, to find out and get answers for different things. And that's that's not acceptable to me. Because I'm not getting paid what they get paid. But I gotta take care of Curtis, because if I don't, I'm not gonna make any money. I mean, I'll, 
I got a buddy last night told me, you dog yourself out too much. As a matter of fact, my wife says that. And I said, well, I'm going to give him a real word. I ain't going to pull no slack, no strings. I'm going to tell you how it is. If it's wrong, it's going to be wrong. If it's right, it's going to be right. And that's the way it's going to be. So be ready for the truth because I'm not going to lie to you. You know, and don't get me wrong. There's good days and there's some bad days. And everybody in my life said, well, you got more bad days than you got good days. I said, well, it's the way it falls. But I was really pleased to see my settlement for this week. It's one of the biggest ones I've got. In fact, the biggest one I've gotten so far. And I'm very pleased with that. So I know deep down inside there's potential to make good money as a lease off. There is potential. It may be few and far between, but there's a good potential to make good money doing lease operating. Kudos to my trainer for that. He said it's out there. It just you, you, you just gotta fall in your lap. So there's the truth. And I'm not gonna lie to you. It was awesome. My wife couldn't believe we could make that much money in a, in a week. So there's money to be made, guys. You, you, you know, you gotta give it a chance. You can't give up real quick. Just like everybody told me, you hang in there. And I'm doing it. I'm hanging. And I'm seeing, I'm reaping the rewards this settlement. Now next week I might complain and moan and groan, but I get nothing. <coughs> but that comes with the territory. You know, this equipment don't run on its own. This equipment don't continue to run constantly. There's things you get problems, breakdowns and issues. So we'll deal with it. But anyway, guys, I'm gonna let you be. I hope you enjoyed the little trip I gave you on here. I hope you've been able to listen to what I had to say. I don't know. Without my phone running, I don't know if you're getting it out of my speaker on the truck or what. But I uh, hope you guys all be safe out there. You have a glorious day. It's Friday. Everybody's probably going out for the weekend, hit the lakes, whatever you're doing. Things are starting to open back up. Things are starting to be thinking about reclosing them because people are just abusing the issue of... Uh, when they release everything. I know Missouri's kind of thinking about it for real seriously of going back to red again where you can't do nothing. So people are just taking it for granted, just being stupid about it, you know, not following the guidelines, but you know, that's the way people are. They don't want to be restricted. You know, but it is what it is. But anyway guys, I'm gonna let you be. And always remember guys, we are always striving and driving for perfection. Okay? Y'all have a great awesome day talk to you. God bless. See you later. Bye.